this week of intercession and prayer and uh, just spending time with the Lord. Um, Freedom One here in God TV. We just thank and praise you, Jesus, and we just invite you in to spend this time with us as we intercede on behalf of others and as we reach out to grasp the corner of your cloak, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you heal our emotions, you heal our physical body, you deliver us. You are everything to us, and we submit everything that we are to you. And we thank you, Jesus, that you would use us as your vessels, and that uh, you have such great love for us. Thank you, Jesus, of all the things that you have won for us. Help us. Open our eyes to see your truth. Uh, because I know uh, we just feel like we're running at 10%. There is so much more. So we, therefore, we just plead to you, Lord Jesus, that we would indeed be obedient and conform to your image. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Um, J. Mark said... Um, this past week, remember, we prayed for him, and he he has the um, preventricular contractions sometimes, and um, he's actually been led this week um, to do some dietary changes, um, and so he is getting some relief via vitamin supplements, <laughs> so... You know, God, God does all things, and that's that's cool. Um, so, boy, you know, a plug, talking about a plug for nutrition, you know that um, our food supply out there is quite a bit depleted from uh, <laughs> what God originally in, intended it for us to be, um, just because of fast-paced living. Um, so. Um, that's really cool that he's getting some benefit nutritionally. Um, we'll continue to pray for him, though, because um, uh, healing is the goal. <laughs> Complete healing. Um, so we'll just pray for Jay's, uh, J. Mark's heart right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank and praise you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for that relief uh, via, via the nutritional supplement uh, that that stuff could subside so he could actually get some sleep at night thank you Jesus for that we speak to that heart we speak life and blessing and healing and peace thank you Lord Jesus that you heal Lord Jesus, indeed, we do agree with your perfect will, your perfect word, in that everyone that comes to you, you heal them all. And so we agree with our brother Jay, who's coming to you on behalf of his uh, PVCs, and we declare Jesus, Jesus, and reach out our hand, and we touch the, the hem of your garment, and indeed, uh, by our faith, we are healed. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that by his faith, he is healed. In Jesus' mighty name. Okay, and another praise report. You know, I, I told you last week about Build the Farm. Uh, he had just um, said a prayer. He had the revelation of a soul tie, and he just asked it. And he said, but I want to test this out. Because he felt a lot of freedom and some of the attack stuff that he was getting um, major relief from it. Um, but he wanted to walk it out and be sure, you know, he really wanted to know, gosh, is that soul tie really what all this terrible problem I was having? And he wrote back again and he said, oh my gosh, it was the soul tie 
that um, was such a huge um, anchor for the enemy in uh, tormenting him, uh, his thought life and, you know, pain and stuff. And so, praise God, um, he's free. <laughs> Exciting. So, awesome. I had, um, I ever since college, I've had this phenomena every very, you know, just like a few times a year where I was part of my vision. I'll get this um, crescent shape in my vision and it looks like static and it's really weird. I'd went to an ophthalmologist before and he couldn't figure out what it was and he said he he was thinking it was eye strain. Well, like last year I don't think I had it at all. Uh, of course last year I was in a, in a state where there wasn't any snow really. But this year I'm up here where the snow is and maybe the brightness, you know how the light can bounce off. And so it might actually be, you know, stressing my eyes out and stuff. But uh, when I came home, I just felt horrible. Um, I hadn't eaten lunch, and I just went to bed for a while. Um, so um, that, is, that is something, you know, we can pray for, too. Because, you know, what if it's an access point? Uh, what if it's not really a, a strain, uh, the eye strain? Maybe there's, maybe there's a spirit behind it. I don't know. Um, I am... I am uh, all for digging for any root causes for anything. And uh, if it is a spirit, um, I want to know. Uh, I, like I said, in college, uh, in college I'm trying to think of things that happened. Um, my husband was um, kind of on the fringes of, of a group that turned into a cult. And I would go to their church. Uh, I would go to my church, and then we, I would go to their church. And so that's about the only kind of thing that I was thinking maybe could have been a tie. Um, maybe I need to, uh, you know, act some more cult stuff. I don't know. Um, but anyhow, it's interesting when you when you start thinking of what what an access point could be or whatever, and you're racking your brain. It's like what what was it? What happened then? And so indeed, um, just pray pray for me. Um, you know, since this is kind of a one sided thing, um, but just in your spare time, if you would pray and just ask the Lord um, regarding this. Um, this thing in my vision that's like static that comes on sometimes, um, uh, what it is, or, or pray for healing or whatever, I would appreciate it. If you get anything, if it gives you a word of knowledge or anything about it, share it. I would appreciate that. Thank you for your prayers in advance. <laughs> um, so... Um, uh, another praise report, I wanted to say that um, I asked you guys um, because uh, just right after the holidays I got really sick and so did my husband and then we had to postpone a bunch of work and then it's like you get off from, from uh, kind of being a little on the weak side and then, then you have all this work to do and so I was asking you, you know, please pray for uh, us to have the strength and get everything done. And we did an amazing amount of work. Um, awesome. <laughs> you know, uh, the, the thing was, and I woke up the next day after, you know, it was an all day thing. I think we got home at 1130. And uh, I woke up and I did not feel like a truck ran me over. <laughs> and I, the first thing I thought of when I woke up was, oh, my friends prayed for me. Thank you, Jesus. So thanks, guys. Um, your prayers are powerful. I am so, so grateful because it really, really made a difference because uh, we did so much and my body took it just fine. So... Um, and last night, gosh, you know, it's like chatterbox here. Um, last night I came home from 
taking my son to practice. I was visiting one of my grandmas. And I get home and I get a message that my grandma, an, another one of my grandmas, thinks she might have had a heart attack. And everybody else, people are out of town, and there's like nobody else that can go. And I just drop everything and I rush over there. And I was the first one there. Right as I was pulling in the drive, I could see two more cars coming. Everybody's rushing. And uh, when I came in, I was all ready to start praying, and she seemed fine. And so I was like, huh. <laughs> I was relieved. Um, we still made her go in uh, to the hospital just to be, you know, how they can do those checks on the blood work and, and stuff to, to be sure. And she didn't have anything, so praise God. Um, and it actually turned out to be a kind of a nice night of, um, you know how everybody will fellowship at the hospital out in the lobby. So, um, it was nice, you know, with extended family we hadn't talked to in a while. So we were all just kind of hanging out and, and, uh, so God turns everything around to his, his good. So thank, thank you, Jesus. So, um, anyhow, thought I'd mention that. Eric on the forum <clears throat> he says that he's in need of prayer um, you know he feels like the Lord is calling him into ministry for this year um, also being called uh, to fast and pray and he was feeling that it was one of those 40 days and 40 nights ordeal um, he's really wanting to uh, come into obedience um, and align with um, with what God has planned uh, to, to do in and through him. So that is a commendable thing. <laughs> um, so we'll just pray for him. <coughs> come on, voice. <coughs> Hang on here. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for our brother Eric and his earnest desire for obedience so that he may be used of you to the fullest degree. He has that desire, Lord Jesus. And I just thank and praise you, Lord Jesus, that he desires to be holy as you are holy and pure. Lord Jesus, I just ask that you would indeed bless him during this time that you would reveal many things to him that you would encourage him to uh, to persevere as he desires to crucify his flesh Lord Jesus we just ask that you would just commission your angels to surround him and protect him as, as old things uh, like music or whatever those things from the past when they try and creep up and sneak him away that he would be able to effectively get out the sword of the spirit your word and say no and to cast it down and come right back into alignment with your holy word lord jesus i thank you lord jesus and i just ask that this would be a a wonderful time of growth for him Thank you. There's nothing better than being taught by you, your Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And here I am feeling a little chatty today. Um, I wanted to share a dream I had last night. Um... <coughs> Um, this was a dream where the enemy was trying to see what he could get away with. Um, in the beginning of the dream, I was there and there was a carload family, a family that was in a car. Uh, the mom, the dad, and I had a, it was really cramped in the back. I want to say there were four kids in the back seat. And anyhow they expressed that they were homeless and so I'm like okay 
uh, well then, you know, and I, and I feel like that whole thing was to try and like uh, draw me in through empathy, you know, uh, that's something the enemy likes to do is to, you know, be the, the, the uh, wolf in the sheep's clothing, you know, to try and, and uh, play your emotions or your sympathies or whatever, to try and, and uh, start his little train rolling. Well, then, then the scene changed to where they were kind of in a, it, there was a house, and I was in this outer, outer part, like an atrium slash uh, back porch kind of area, and there were piles of stuff everywhere. Um, piles of stuff in dreams is generally not a good thing. Um, you know, it kind of speaks of, uh, when there's like piles of things, it's like baggage, um, you know, things like the enemy wants to pile on you. If you ever have dreams with clothing in them, guess what wears clothing? Entities wear clothing. And so those dreams are a little bit better with the clothing piles because it kind of lets you know that deliverance is taking place. I've had many a dream where things would happen in the dream and then I would see piles of clothes and uh, but if, if, if there's piles of things hanging around a lot um, that can kind of be like a baggage kind of things like stuff you're carrying around or or whatever or or like what the enemy intends to pile on you or or something but anyhow um, I remember the kids were just running kind of wild through the house and these people had every appearance of godliness. They were very kind, very nice, and you know, and and they they said, "Here, come into the den area or their little living room. We want we want uh, you to watch a movie or some program on TV." And there was no chair really for me to sit on. I remember sitting on the floor. And they started this show, and I wasn't wasn't really interested in watching it and they were chit chatting the whole time but the show it had terrible stuff uh, debauchery um, just yucky stuff on it and I wasn't watching it I was like I was in there and I was just like refusing you know they're having conversation and whatnot and I'm just refusing to be there and finally it's like I get up and I leave and then the dream ends but it's like, what are they trying to do? They're trying to defile, trying to wear me down and just just see if I would, you know, oh, I'm in the presence of these so-called Christian people. But that's what we can't look for anymore, right? We're looking for good fruits. Uh, you can say and talk all you want, but by their fruits you'll know them, right? And so, uh, I, I got out of there. I'm like, no. <laughs> so, how can I look at this dream? Well, I can look at it as, oh, they were trying to see what they could get away with with me. And I could see what my reaction was. My reaction was, is no, I have no part of this. And so I left. So... This is a way in the dreamscape of how you can see your progress, see your growth. And so sometimes you'll have disturbing dreams or whatever, but when you pick it apart and you analyze, well, what was the enemy doing? What was I doing? Then you can get excited because you're like, ah, I passed. <laughs> I passed. Now, if I would have failed, if I would have stayed there and engaged and watched it and, and whatever, then what would happen? Um, the enemy during the daytime, you can bet that something nasty would come on TV or whatever, and that's how they try to get their foot in. They're trying to dig and dig and dig until they can find an inroad with you. And then during your waking hours, situations, people, stuff is going to happen to where they are going to those people in, under the impulse of the enemy that have those spirits or whatever will come in your path and those kind of things will be played out 
and if you go with it then you just go further into sin <laughs> so um, it, your, the dreamscape is very important to pay attention to um, okay well I just wanted to share that <laughs> I knew I knew the moment when I woke up this morning that uh, that there was a little something more than uh, you know that I should share that so okay um, all right I want to pray for Brian Quinn uh, came across him on YouTube and on his page he wrote seeking a miracle for a very serious neck injury if you believe in miraculous healing please send your intention to me so he was just looking for hey you know if you will pray for me uh, please let me know and of course if I see that of course I'm gonna say yes <laughs> um, Lord Jesus, I just thank and praise you. Thank and praise you, Lord Jesus, for Brian. I just ask, Lord Jesus, for your hand upon Brian. I declare that the enemy shall not prosper. We speak to that neck. We speak for alignment. Brambabek of his neck. Bramba shia papo sikina bakari bara to kinibaka. Brambera to kinibara kuri bara shukuri baka. Brambera sepera to kinibakara bara sukuri baka. Mimera jia bara sukane. Yenu kikana kuni bara baka. And I want to speak to the trauma. Bramba kinibaka. And what I would like to do, uh, which I have not prepared for. But let me see if I can um, get a prayer for trauma up, uh, because we can all um, join in and pray this. Alright, so there we did that, um, and we just agree that any trauma that um, Brian had, um, you know, he didn't have any details on whether it was a car accident or whatever it is, but uh, we speak to that and we declare no trauma uh, to his neck in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank and praise you, Lord Jesus. Speak alignment and order to his neck. We speak to those muscles to come in alignment with a perfect word of God. Speak mobility and life. All the cartilage. Brahma mama wakemebe kepera sukia. All the nerves. Brahma hoi kuneba kinoko. All the connective tissue. Brobaka speak your healing power in the mighty name of Jesus. Jiba kin kunia kanon kore para sempe chikina. Yehoro tu vera suntra bakanebeke. Bromba kereba koro para sukura bakanaba. Praise you, Jesus. Brashi kino hoi tan tero sukuni karaboka. Bromba kereba. You know, and uh, I don't know, all throughout the prayer, and it didn't matter what part, you know, there's stuff that didn't even deal with Brian's neck, you know, the, just trauma in general, but throughout it, I could feel my stomach on fire, so I think a lot of us were being blessed by that prayer. Uh, <laughs> I'm even feeling some warmth on my back here. <laughs> 
But I did feel a little bit in my neck. It was a small bit. Um, so we received that for for Brian. Brobeken. I will have to contact him and see how he's doing. Okay. Um, I put this up on the forum. Uh, prayer uh, request from Ivan, who's had an ongoing health issue with his sinus area and his head. He don't know, doesn't know what's causing it, but it makes him feel like he's in a daze. And his memory is suffering. Emotions affected. Um, so wanting to know what's causing it, if it's sinus related, allergic reaction, or whatever. Um, okay, a more excellent way to be in health by Henry W. Wright. Uh, a certain gene uh, sent me that book. Uh, and I have, I, I, I get to read a little bit of it um, when I travel for long distances. Um, but I haven't got through it all. But there is a part in there that talks about a uh, study of root causes re relating to symptoms regarding sinus infection or sin sin sinusitis or sinusitis or whatever you want to call it. And it talks about the root of that being fear and anxiety. And then uh, the fact that what your body's doing is an overproduction of histamine. Um, that's in conjunction with stress, stress, anxiety, tension, and uh, just a, a basic thing of the emotion of insecurity produces an ex excessive histamine in the body as well. So, you know, I pointed those things out, um, you know, and, it, and, it, and if they, they do happen to coincide with real problems, um, you know, that very well could be a root. Um, so, uh, the other thing that I learned from that book, is, it talked about how you can become addicted to taking antihistamines because of the histamine production from all this stuff. Um, and, and you know this, that, like, when you try to get off of something, your body will continue with the symptoms. And so it's really hard because it's like um, you still feel like you're sick or whatever or, or having any, all these problems, but if you, it's just your body, um, you know. And what they wrote in the book was um, because of the addiction, your body will mirror the symptoms because at once it's fixed. So after you get off antihistamines, you still can have a runny nose and still the watery eyes. And the, um, the fact that antihistamines do meddle with your personality, um, you know. So, you know, with all this stuff in mind, um, th this is a real valid kind of thing. Um, people in deliverance ministry and, and healing ministry, uh, we can't discount the things that they really notice. Uh, when they begin to see a pattern and, you know, thank God for people that share. So uh, this could be a, a, something for Ivan to look into. So anyhow, um, I did implore him to pray about this and, and begin to dig and, and maybe if he finds a correlation. Um, thank you for uh, texting in a prayer. I'll get to it in just a minute here. Um, <laughs> I just want to be more thorough with this. But, um, so we will indeed pray uh, regarding his sinus and his head area and this kind of a fog that it creates over him, uh, making it a little miserable. So, Broba Hebera Suntarano. Lord Jesus, we just lift up Ivan to you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your touch. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you don't turn anyone away that comes to you. 
I thank you and I declare that as Ivan presses in that he shall know directly from you Holy Spirit of the things that he needs revelation on regarding whatever this is and we agree with you your Holy Spirit Lord Jesus for healing regarding uh, the pressure in his mind over the dazed feeling that he he gets we bind up all of those things and the problems that he's had in his sinuses in the mighty name of Jesus and we command them to go to the footstool of Jesus for judgment we speak clarity over him. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that your hand is mighty to save. Thank you, Jesus, that you healed them all. Thank you, Lord God. We receive that healing entirely for Ivan and that complete victory in his spirit for all that you are thank you jesus thank you jesus for you uphold him amen okay <laughs> okay william wrote oh i remember you your bill <laughs> please pray for god's direct will to be done in and for both Bonnie and me, for our relationship. Thank and thanks and blessings. Amen. I want to ask you, William. Oh, he brought you together in December 2011. Awesome. So you guys are a new couple, huh? Oh. Really new. Yay. So, um, have you continued to kind of, you know, she, she had some tra traumatic stuff in her past. Um, have you continued, right, um, have you been kind of going through that and, uh, you know, um, closing down, um, you know, it's like that trauma prayer, you know, hi, trying man, <laughs> um, yeah, you know, a lot of trauma in the erasing of, of the, the memory, the cellular memory of that too, um, yeah, um, yeah, I play, were you here when I played the prayer to remove trauma and erasing the past? I just played that a little bit ago. Because, all right, cool. Uh, were you feeling, you know, because when I was, when, when I played that, I was feeling lots of stuff. Uh, so I know it was more, it was more than Ivan's, uh, or uh, Brian's neck. Good. Awesome. Okay. I just thank and praise you, Lord Jesus, for this couple. I thank you that you are a covenant God. And you uphold your children. I thank you, Lord Jesus that you wipe everything away as though it's not even there. I thank you, Lord Jesus. We just turn over this couple to you, Lord Jesus. For you make all things new. And I pray, Lord Jesus, uh, for your hand of intervention, the, your cross between Bonnie and this trauma, and we command any trauma and any, any memory of it to go to your footstool, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus. That it go. That it wash away. In the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you. Indeed, you make all things new. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for your perfect love in this marriage. 
that they would be equally yoked up, 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 and that they will continue to just build each other up, build each other up, that they can uh, build off of one another, drawing each other closer to you, and uh, and being drawn to one another closer as well. I speak every blessing. Thank you, Jesus, for their faith in you. Mm. Wow, I like praying for you guys. <laughs> Make uh, my stomach's all warm and fuzzy. <laughs> oh, you're in, yeah. Yeah, you know, and some of that some sometimes it's that that uh that old stuff um that's what does it and some of it's like the um you know learning and training yourself and taking every thought captive um and it's hard because i mean you have to realize it and then you just have to exercise it and exercise it and um and and for your part is anytime you feel that pulling away um, that's when you begin to uh, pray and shield her. Um, and then she, in turn, also needs to realize that, um, you know, anything that would try and bottle her up or get her to bottle her emotions up or anything, it you just have to just begin to train yourself and say, ah, the enemy is trying to wedge in my relationship. Uh, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Um... And so just um, analyzing what's going on. And something that might be really good for her, um, a really good way to start out when you are um, really beginning to train, train yourself is to journal. Um, I, I did it quite a bit uh, when I first started. You know, it was really good with the house cleaning. Uh, I would begin to write down um, anybody that's ever hurt me. I would start a list. Um, it, any bad situations, experiences. And then I would begin to pray on those things. And, at, you know, crumble up the paper next month, get it out. And I would write things again. And pretty soon I would begin to, to get peace over things. And that way I knew that I was in complete forgiveness regarding people. Um, because as we know, unforgiveness blocks us. Um, so, and things, you know, we can say and we can feel like we mean it. But when we pray and we bring it up again if we feel that aversion in our spirit there is something still there so it's really difficult um you know and it's just something we just have to keep bringing up and inviting jesus jesus where were you during this time um and and just keep turning it over to him and turning it over but um the whole journaling thing is really good because you you have that history there and you can see your growth from that point on and um, it's really kind of a blessing um, and if you happen to journal um, see when I first started journaling I did it in the notebooks I would wake up and I would I would do my journal stuff and dreams and everything and I would scribble, and I had horrible handwriting, you know, because I'm tired and I'm scribbling or whatever. Well, now I do things differently. I actually um, type it. I got a little phone that I can henpeck on and then send myself uh, the message, and then I can swipe it, and I can put it in a text document. So then when I'm on my computer... Uh, I can keyword and look for things from my past or whatever, and I can do a find search. Um, I do it, I have one 
text document per year. And so, oh, I remember that happened in 2010, so I'll do a, a find search for that year, and I'll keyword, and I'll look through till I find it. That works good with dreams. It works good with, oh, when did, when did this person and I get in this fight? Or, you know, just, just whatever it is. Um, so then you can remember and just help, it help, helps you, um, get through your stuff, you know? Um, but it, I mean, if you, if you could kind of, you know, try to do the journaling thing, um, I can't remember what video I have where I talk about, I want to say it's called Manifestation Power on my Freedom Zone 1 account, but I talk about going through and writing all your hurts and all your pains like once a month, and then you crumble it up, and then you throw it away. And, but yeah, she, she needs shielded. So let's just pray for her some more. Um, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the prayers of your righteous one, ones avail much. So indeed, we do lift up Bonnie to you, Lord Jesus. We just ask, commission, we just beg for a commissioning of your angels to surround her and protect her. To block her mind. Give her that supernatural understanding of when the enemy is implanting a thought a deed, anything, a past hurt, that what those things are, are to separate. Lord Jesus, train her to, to begin to take everything captive unto the obedience of you, Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you for William and his deep love for her. Thank you, Jesus, for this brother. And thank you, Lord Jesus. I just ask for and agree that you would honor his prayers. As I was praying, I see... I see you... I mean, she could be completely a doll, rag doll. But that's the willingness that you have for her to just hold her, even if she doesn't have the strength. So I'm really blessed. That's really neat. <laughs> that's really special. She She's a lucky girl. She really is. And so uh, we will keep, <laughs> keep her in prayer. So, yeah, if you got any prayer requests... Um, Info at hearinggod.tv or text in, and uh, I'm going back here on the forum and going through our list. Um, Brother Chung or Chun and Gail are receiving deliverance tomorrow. Woo! I'm excited for them. Um, very excited, and they're excited too. Um, yeah, they got to travel a few hours away um, to, to get some help with it. And uh, so we will just uh, pray for them as they go and do this. Lord Jesus, I just thank and praise you. I thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray that nothing will be missed. Absolutely nothing will be missed. Yishukin, I thank you, Lord Jesus, even now as you are readying them, that you are reminding them of things, that you are preparing them, that you are making the way. Lord Jesus, we thank and praise you, Lord Jesus, for your angelic escort as they travel. We, we declare no sickness Nothing that would uh, try to sneak in at the last minute to make them not want to go. <laughs> we, we, uh, we know what the enemy tries to do. And so we thank you, Lord Jesus, that if anything would try to come in and try to hinder their uh, time at this deliverance session, that you would alight their mind, 
so that they can see it for what it is and declare and proclaim your victory. We, we declare victory and perfect operation of their vehicle that, that uh, your angels will completely surround them and protect them from point A to point B and back again for uh, no hindrances. Satan, we declare that you are uh, void and powerless in preventing them from uh, this deliverance session in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, we also pray. Um, they've been involved in a fellowship, and there's all these divisions and splits starting to happen. And um, he thinks he's discerning that things are kind of twisted and turned into a cult. Um, and that both groups, you know, it's kind of like, it's hard because when you try to get the facts straight, uh, people are turning their nose up on you and, you know, um, you know, the semblance of bad fruit there, you know. And I was encouraging him because uh, there is no shame. There is nothing wrong with pointing out this doesn't look right and this is what the word says and to ask a question and to be belittled or scoffed at or whatever no the truth you you don't put it under a bushel basket right you put it on a lampstand for all to see and there is no shame in the truth and so um and this is how we stand against cults and, and whatnot, is we say, this is what the word is, and this is what I see. And that's how you, you remain blameless, because you only deal with the truth. You don't deal with the people and point fingers and, and whatnot. And so um, I know it, it is all going to work great for them. So... I just thank you, Lord Jesus, and I just declare that you are using him during this time. That he may be as a healing balm. That him and Gail may be as a healing balm. As the enemy uh, sifts these fellowships. That he may be as a balm of healing. That he may... Uh, speak forth your truth, your word that brings forth restoration and healing. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that he may exhort and encourage everyone around him to get their eyes off of, of the negative stuff and turn back to the king that's really set above them, not the fellowships, not the people in power, in these fellowships, but that Jesus, Jesus, you are king over each individual person. So I thank you for that, Lord Jesus. I also ask that you would bless Brodeke, for I know that he is being called into some sort of ministry, that you would bless him, Brodeke, and his wife. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that he will grow quickly in your uh Word. Thank you, Jesus. Seal that in your precious name. You can join in at hearinggod.proboards.com. I have, you know, I set that up as kind of a nice little community thing um, where, where people can share and grow and build off of one another um, because I know it's hard. Um, a lot of times people feel like they're alone out there and so um, I just I created this forum that would also help with uh, ministry type of stuff because I'm kind of on my own in, in what I'm doing here um, you know it's like I have my life I've got things to do and whatever but oops he says I'm a ministry <laughs> so I created the the pro boards um, you know, he, he laid that burden on me for a while. Um, and then when all the stuff of life kind of sped up, it's really a blessing because then other people can get on there and share your giftings or whatever. 
And so it's not like a me-focused thing. Um, everybody can join in and do things. And, yeah, I can be in there and whatever, but then it's not such a burden on me. Um, and everybody can make good friends and you know and and it's cool so all right and try and man you're testing about the trauma yeah yeah the enemy's like a shark an opportunist if there's you know i i can remember when i was young my, i had a grandparent that had a place down in florida and down in florida um in the in the keys there can be shallow water for long, long, long way. And we don't, we'd go out and go hunting for the really cool uh, mollusk shells and whatnot. And there was one time where I actually had a scratch on my ankle. Uh, I had blood leaking in the water. <laughs> I didn't really know it. And in that really shallow water, I mean, maybe this big, um... I saw out the corner of my eye a hammerhead shark. I mean, it was a baby, but I saw it. And boy, did I jump and I ran to the shore. And when I went to the shore, that's when I noticed I had that little cut. Um, but that's, that's kind of like what trauma is, is life wounds us. Um, people aren't kind and, and things. And that little bit of blood there attracts the sharks. And so the enemy will just come right in and heap shame or guilt or doubt. Anything, any kind of doorway that's, that's already started from the pain, the enemy will jump in there and compound it. And then after a while, there's just so many things stuffed in that door crack that it's hard because it's really hard to pinpoint what started it, what was the first thing, and that's where an actual traumatic incident or big uh, life change or something can be that that uh, sign, you know. And then uh, you know, so it's it's going back in that memory and just asking Jesus to be there and to you know just kind of asking him to erase it and everything and then uh, then you can slowly go back and then uh, recognize the thoughts the feelings the assaults that you have and then begin to go into deliverance and get rid of all those other things um, and some some things do take time but it's easiest when you focus on what the trauma because that's what started it and then work your way from there because sometimes it's almost like um, you're shooting baseballs but you can't figure out where the they're coming from they're just coming from every direction uh, that's that whole pig piling thing so now we will pray for uh, one of Andy's requests, he says, Caroline's neighbor, Gavin, has been posted to Afghanistan for six months from the end of this month. And he has a wife, two children, he is a Christian. Uh, Caroline would like us to pray for him to be shielded. Well, amen. Amen. Um, that's hard <laughs> when, you got, when you got the kids. Um, I thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for Caroline. And just ask that you would bless her. Thank you for her heart of love um, in caring for others. Just ask that you would just uh, bless her, Lord Jesus. Bless her heart. Thank you for her heart of mercy. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Okay, and we pray for Gavin. We pray for him. We just call forth your warring angels of shielding to surround him on his six-month post. We just ask, Lord Jesus, that you would alert his senses and uh, that your Holy Spirit would be there to guide him and... Uh, 
to that he would obey uh, your spirit, uh, whether it's moving to the right or to the left, that he will move into your safety. Thank you for your shielding. And your protection over him. And also for his wife and his two children, that they remain safe. So that Gavin will have no anxiety while he is gone. That they are in your per perfect hands of protection, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this family. And uh, bless them in the mighty name of Jesus. Name. I got a uh, prayer request. It's regarding a couple uh, and moving. Um, the wife has been getting warning for at least a year. I, I almost think it's been more than a year. Um, that she has felt the burden in her spirit um, that they need to physically move uh, because of an oncoming disaster. Um, she feels she's gotten a word from the Lord regarding, um, you know, needing to, to move to a safe place and getting direction uh, regarding that. Um, you know, and of course, she's a good wife. <laughs> uh, she recognizes that her husband is the house, the the head of the house, and she does want to uh, be obedient. And of course, um, you know, we we're not going to pray witchcraft type prayers. Thy will be done. You know, um, but the husband does in, indeed need to commit and decide regarding this. Um, so we just pray for this family. We, we pray your hand of blessing and unity in their marriage, Lord Jesus. We agree for the protection of your own. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that the prayers of the righteous avail much. I thank you, Lord Jesus, and I know 110% that you will bring clarity to the situation. And that you will indeed, whether it be during the day, whether it be pushing through circumstances, that you would bottleneck them so that they will move into your perfect will. Or if it be in the night watch, that you would uh, specifically direct him to know what is the way that you would have them go for, the, for their family. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that they are in your hands in your hands of protection. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I declare your best over them. In your hand of blessing. In that, um, that you lead and feed and you guide and provide over this household of faith. Thank you, Jesus. Excuse me. I also praise you, Jesus, for their kids. Bless their children. Bless their children. Thank you for the blessing that they are. Amen. I do have um, a, a prayer request from YouTube. Uh, she says, uh, we'll call her Lynn. She is seeking the gift of tongues. She's also looking for a church that's uh, into speaking in tongues in London. Well, uh, praise God. I know somebody mm. that's in the UK. <laughs> I can't say that he's in London. But at least I know somebody in the UK, and so I will hook her up with with that person, uh, if, so that uh, you know if if he knows specifically, he'll be able to help her. Um, thank you, Lord Jesus, for Lynn and her desire uh, in great in your greater giftings, Lord Jesus. You desire that we ask, seek, and knock, and press in, and believe your your truth, and we thank you, Lord Jesus, that uh, tongues have not passed away, deliverance has not passed away, healing has not passed away, but that uh, these are part of your ministry, and so I thank you, Lord Jesus, that she desires a greater gift. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that your Holy Spirit impresses those things upon us. So we speak your hand upon her. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that she desires this gifting. We loosen her tongue 
Brebeke, that she may speak your praises. Brushi has seek on a bonada bonada bakina. Memere de la boke. Gera sia sentiero toro blabada de la bokane bake. Brebeke, me impart this gifting of tongues. Braba bashuka. It is her desire, Lord Jesus. It is her desire. Brebebe de la bokara bashuka de la bokane bake. Praise you, Jesus. And of course, I will be uh, encouraging her on some of the playlists I have so that none of the bases get missed. Because there's some, um, there's, uh, you know, baptism in the, in the spirit and is, is step number one. So I, I never want to, um, not expect everyone to uh, over overlook anything. Her request. Almost done with tutoring. And the last part of work is discouraging. It looks like a really big book. Hey, the Bible's a really big book. <laughs> let it it's not discouraging right how do you go with it so tell you what you look at you look at that big book and you uh, thank and praise the Lord uh, just like with the Bible how it's not an oh my gosh thing it's because the spirit leads you so you declare in your in your work and, and everything, and you give the Holy Spirit permission. Say, come in here. I can't do it. I give you permission. You, you help me do this. Um, that's what he wants you to do. And that's how it, um, you know. Isn't that what David did? David and Goliath. He said, who is this man to taunt the armies of the living God? Who is he? Huh? Because he he allows God to, you know. So cool. So Lord Jesus, we just pray for Dylan. We declare this uh, mountain to be as a molehill. I thank and praise you, Lord Jesus. You would just flood Dylan with confidence. For he can do all things through you, Jesus Christ, who is his strength. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your uh, armament upon him that he puts on the armor of God. And he is safe in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, could you pray that I get the strength to let go of my trauma for God to open a way for me to get money freedom one okay Lord Jesus I thank you for trying man again his desire for complete freedom. I thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you for that completeness of peace found in you. I am looking up a video that uh, when I started praying for Trying Man, it, it just came to my mind. Uh, it's called A Prayer for Peace, Tony Kemp on Sid Roth. Anyhow, um, that, that video, um, enter in, listen to that and enter in, it, it's amazing. You will just feel the peace um, just drip right into you. Try and man regarding the, the trauma to continue to turn it over to Jesus. Lord Jesus, we, we do agree. He desires complete freedom. Complete freedom, complete peace in you, Lord Jesus. That nothing so awful in this world 
can even matter. When it's next to you, our complete focus, you are our precious. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right, so I'm being silly too, but it's funny. It's true. So I was telling my son with basketball, I said, what is, what is your number one focus? The ball. Where is it at all times? It's your precious. <laughs> so that's, that's Jesus is our precious. Isaiah 40, regarding the rash. Greater are you, O Lord Jesus, than anything in this world. We place the cross of Jesus Christ between the enemy and between uh, Isaiah 40's flesh. We declare that her flesh belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. It has been purchased at a great price. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you healed them all. And so we just declare that she is healed. Because she comes to you. We just give you permission, Lord Jesus, to take over that skin. With your healing power. We see it in our mind, smooth as a baby's bottom, with no blotch or spot, with no scale or irritation. We speak to that skin to come in line with the perfect word of God. And we declare it is new in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. All right, and we will pray for Jim. Yay, for Jim. Okay, Jim uh, has been having some terrible stomach pains. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Lord Jesus, we know you are here. You are here in our midst. We just ask that your uh, ministering angels would go forth and surround Jim. You, O Lord God, your Holy Spirit, you declare you are the great comforter. And so we speak your great comfort into his physical body right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare that he is healed in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare uh, that uh, his stomach come into line with the perfect word of God. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you heal our infirmities, our diseases, and our sicknesses. I thank you, Lord Jesus. We speak right now to uh, the order of his stomach, um, uh, the, the pH in his stomach, uh, the, the healthy bacteria in his stomach. We declare perfect pH. We declare a perfect uh, probiotic count or whatever it is. Uh, his uh, intestinal flora, uh, we turn that over to you, Lord Jesus, and we declare uh, your hand upon it. We declare that the body shall not fight itself, but shall bow to the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We speak your best over his entire body. We speak life over his brain we declare perfect fun functioning between his brain and his body we bind up any warring 
between the two in the mighty name of Jesus we declare uh, peace your peace Lord Jesus your peace yes Lord Jesus pour forth your anointing oil upon James thank you Lord Jesus so we declare that he is made whole in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, oh gosh. Oof. Okay, and I see that I am now um <laughs> that uh, my browser crashed again, but I'm not going to continue on. So I am going to go and if you see this, um, it's uh, the end but I just wanted to share that uh, when I was just praying, uh, I just feel all this oil pouring on my head. It's like a lot. <laughs> it's just the sensation of oil pouring down. So we just declare that victory over James. Amen. And I'll see you all next week.